our overall goal is to ensure that when the students graduate from the school that they're able to function in the society that they're, that they're graduating into. So students need to be able to learn how to interact with that environment. At the same time, we want to focus on learning at the school so that technology is just one tool that students are using. So at this school, starting in grade four to grade 12, we have a one-to-one -one environment with the laptop computer. And we focused on the Apple platform because that platform provides the best platform for multimedia. And we realized that the new literacy is really multimedia. Kids need to be able to interact with audio and video and sound at the same time, also interact with the computer on the internet, word processing, et cetera. Essentially, we have a one-to-one -one laptop environment, grades four through 12, and the purpose of that is we see the laptop as a critical learning tool. It's a resource, it's a research tool, it's a multimedia device, it's a creative device, um, it does everything. What it looks like in the classroom, uh, depending on the class, so for example, in our social studies classes at the moment in sixth grade, Okay, they're embarking on a project where they've, they've been learning about uh, ancient Egypt and the geography and topography of ancient Egypt. And so now they're in a point where they're demonstrating their learning of the geography of Egypt and the topographic features uh, in um, a 3D virtual environment in Minecraft, which is a, 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 essentially a game uh, that allows them to create a totally different world. So before we could have done it maybe on paper, maybe we could have made a, a model in class. We, we now have other digital tools that allow us to not only work on these, but also to collaborate with other people, share them with people beyond the classroom. We're, we're technology rich in this school, which is awesome. Um, every kid has the device, okay? And what we can do with the device is pretty amazing. We, we've went from we used to have a mixed platform to moving into a unified platform. So we're an Apple school, which means every kid's got an Apple device, grades four through 12. What that allows us to do is it allows us to teach different skills in those grades and that translates up. So what they're learning in fourth grade will then translate to what they're learning in fifth, sixth, seventh, and beyond. So we, we chose the Apple computer because it's a creative, robust machine. In addition to that, we also, uh, the main purpose of our technology is to be able to integrate it into the curriculum. So we see students having these tools as part of the everyday curriculum. The computer, the iPad, it's not for technology classes. Yes, we use them in technology course classes, but it's for the everyday curriculum for every class. So in PE, students are checking their heart rate, they're documenting it, they're logging it, they're creating videos um, to show how they know how to do these different skills in PE. Uh, we use iPads that sit up on a stand uh, to record students when they shoot a basketball. They go back, they look at the iPad, they can see how did I shoot that, where did I fall on the plane when I arced, how did that work. They get instant feedback, they jump back with the group, they try it next time. So we're, part of the reason we use technology here is to provide instant feedback and to create a richer learning environment for students. One of the amazing things here at school is we have Apple TVs in all of our classrooms. What that allows us to do is it means we can be wireless. We're no longer tethered to one spot in the classroom as the teacher. It means we're wireless anywhere. We can have our device with us, be it our computer, our iPad, our phone, whatever we need to be projecting, we can do that wirelessly. It also means when our students are working on things, they can share anything like that right on the screen. So this student can share, then this student can share, and they can all do that wirelessly in the classroom. The makerspace in the elementary school is uh, it's a design process where students were really just trying to get them to collaborate, communicate, and be creative. Those are kind of the three main goals. And we want them just to be working together, working with their hands, working with their brains, and creating things. In the makerspace, the first thing we did is we created these pegboards that students can just take random objects put them in and they roll marbles or ping pong balls or golf balls down them and they just try to create something where the ball can roll all the way down. We can give them challenges for who can take the longest to get the ball to roll down without falling off or who can take the shortest amount of time. And then we've created these wind tunnels which are basically all donated materials that we just kind of put together. Uh, they have fans at the bottom and big wind tubes and kids put things in them and they can make like whirly birds or balloons and just uh, to aerodynamics, so it teaches them a bit about aerodynamics. 
the maker space is more a concept than, than it is a space, a physical space. We, we we're trying to infuse at school is a culture of makers, uh, students who can actually uh, become engineers, become inventors, uh, imagine something and then actually end up creating a final product. Uh, we want to help our kids to think like designers. Uh, we are developing right now a design cycle uh, where students are going to have to go through that cycle uh, throughout any activity that they do at school. Uh, both, I mean, something that they are doing physically or even a, a research paper, right? Where they have to go through a planning process, then they have to, to do a research, and then they have to generate an idea and then create prototypes and then generate a, a final product, which can be a, a robot or it can be a, a research paper. And then going through that cycle, revising and going back to it and improving whatever it is that they are doing. So again, for us, the main point is to get students just to think like designers. And, and apply this design cycle in everything that they do. Grade 4 is going to do some really exciting things in the makerspace this year. We've already gone down and done some sessions just getting our hands on things. We've got wind tunnels and pegboards and a variety of materials they've been creating with, experimenting, building, taking stuff home. Um, we also have a planned unit on electricity and magnetism where we're going to be investigating a variety of materials and if they conduct circuits um, looking for conductors, insulators. It's an amazing space that has a variety of materials for them to use and the responses are amazing. Those aha moments of things that we couldn't possibly do before, for example putting circuits into water with some of these devices and learning that water conducts um, has just been phenomenal. We get screaming, we get cheering, we get celebrating, high fives, um, and just really thinking outside the box and doing things differently than maybe a traditional science kit or something um, that was out of a textbook before. These kids are creating this stuff themselves and it makes their learning really authentic. I think we're always looking to the future to see what the future holds, although the future is more difficult to understand now. However, this year we have students graduating in grade 12, at the same time we have students entering in kindergarten. So we need to graduate those 12th grade kids ready for their future today and also help prepare those kids in kindergarten so that when they graduate, they're able to graduate into the world that they find, which will be very different than the world today.